this is Shadi Savati, the creative director at One Pixel Brush, and I wanted to talk to you about how we approach IP development, which stands for intellectual property. So every IP starts with this, an empty blank page with nothing on it. But soon after, an idea congeals about what it could be. Now, often people get in touch with us to help them figure out their art style. But the art style is a reaction to the story, to the tone, and if it's a game, to the gameplay. So often with story ideas, they can start with a setting, they can start with a time period, they can start with just a high level world idea. But one of the things we think is super valuable to have is an idea for a one-on-one -on -one relationship between two characters that's going to get more and more intense, where the stakes are gonna get higher and higher for them. And even if you're making something that isn't uh, necessarily story-based, it's always really helpful because that dictates the next thing, which is the tone. Now the tone affects so much about the art style. Uh, for example, if you have a story about trying to find a gas station to pee at versus a story about trying to rescue your child from a burning house, well, the lighting, the color, um, the way we frame the camera, everything we do in figuring out what your IP is going to look like is going to be affected by that. Um, and then gameplay, gameplay is the biggest and most tricky one of all. For example, we worked for four years on The Last of Us Part Two, and for that game, the setting and the world um, and the one-on-one -on -one relationships are really grounded. So it's impossible for one of the characters to put on a jetpack and fly over a fence, even though that might be fun to play. A lot of times there's a lot of conversation and back and forth between these three things, and all of these things together determine what the art style is going to be. But it can start with any piece. Any piece is a valid starting point. It's just that we together have to figure out how those things are going to work together to make your IP really sing. So we are constantly working on internal projects, and this is one that we came up with. Uh, it's called Diaboli. So our spark of an idea was, what if the devil comes back to earth to destroy it? Of course, in the Christian Bible, in the last book called Revelation, there is some talk of what that would be like, but it's a little ambiguous. So we thought it would be a fun thing to try to visualize. Um, the first thing we did is, besides that high-level premise, is come up with a one-on-one -on -one relationship that we thought could be interesting about someone who's an atheist, um, he has someone he loves wrongfully executed, and he tries to get revenge. Um, that setting would be uh, a good backdrop to the world that we want to create. So we then help to come up with a full treatment. Now, treatment is just a few pages to basically outline what's going to happen. Um, and is brief and it's succinct and with as much detail as is absolutely necessary to tell the main arcs of the story. This has to do with the setting and all the major dramatic moments. After we're done with that, we start doing a bunch of loose sketches. Now, these aren't designed to flesh out every single last thing. They're just designed to think about what are the moments that need our help, right? We don't need to concept a forest with a person running in it. We kind of know what that is. It's, it's not unknown. What we need to focus on are the things that we're not sure what they look like. Um, so what are the biggest pieces of the puzzle that are missing in something like that? So one of the doodles we had was just the obvious, okay? If the tent pole of this IP is the devil's coming back to earth to destroy it, we thought it would be fun if the devil comes out of a volcano. And what does that mean? It's a world that's getting more dangerous. Volcanoes are sort of getting more common. A lot of the world is being destroyed. And then eventually around the third act, if it's a movie or maybe the third quarter of the season or midway through the game, uh, the devil actually emerges from a volcano. So that from this sketch was the first thing we focused on. Now, this is still extreme blue sky, right? We don't know a lot about the IP. We have a rough idea of the beats of the story, but this is just about proving the concept because this is the most fantastical, hard to imagine, and pivotal moment in the story about a devil coming back to Earth to destroy it. Um, because of our 3D-based process, we can do alternate shots relatively cheaply and easily. We zoom in on this one um, because we really wanna feel what that's going to be like. The devil is a little bit ambiguous in the Bible, thankfully, and so it left some room for interpretation. One of the things we imagined is that he had these long, skinny legs um, and that he was so big that he you couldn't ever even see him at once. He was like way up in the clouds. Um, and then an idea kind of came to pass that it would be cool to see him standing in this very sort of graphic pose. Now, again, the tone of this, like I was saying, is very grounded. So that means we're not gonna do concept art things that are gonna to be too over the top, not for this story, not for this tone. Then the concept is worked on. It's post battle, there's thousands of dead soldiers. 
Um, and the idea sparked that what if his body was made of the damned, meaning hundreds of thousands of millions of tortured souls, right? If the devil came back to earth, that would be such a uh, iconic and intense way to depict him. So we started imagining, okay, on this big, simple shape, what's going to be there in terms of all these tortured, screaming people? And based on the story and based on the tone, what's going to happen in the fiction of this world during the Crusades? Well, during a battle, I'm sure a priest might come and think, a very brave priest might think, well, God is on my side. I'm going to come face this devil head on with the power of God inside me. Um, and so, again, because of our 3D process, we're trying to frame shots that either tell the filmmaker or the game makers, hey, this is what this is supposed to feel like. This is what this is going to be like. And also, without having to flesh out every part of the world, trying to flesh out the most bizarre and dramatic and things that we really have no idea what that would look like and create them visually to get the ball rolling. And then after that, we can start to figure out where all the pieces are going to fall. One of the things that's interesting is an IP like this could work for a movie, could work for a TV show. But if it was a video game, we need some stuff to fight. So in thinking about how to approach an IP like this for a video game, we, th we thought, okay, well, all the people in there are just the damned and they're tortured and perhaps they're melted to each other. Like if someone has wronged them, they're like stuck attached to them forever. You know, that kind of... It's horrible, yes, but we're trying to imagine what hell would be like uh, for these people. Um, and the side effect of that is saying, okay, but you're going to need stuff to fight. It's a video game, right? A film may need it for some dramatic effect, but a video game is going to really need it. So we spent some time imagining what the sort of characters that you're going to have to interact with in a video game will have to be. Also, in a video game version of this IP, we probably need the Crusades to not just be people. It probably has to be fighting the opposing side. Of course, the Crusades were battles between Christians and Muslims, and you probably have to unpack something that had you fighting on both sides um, and then fighting this monster creature that came out. So it's really tough to pin down, but the point is, as you kind of have a conversation about what the IP is going to be, things all start to affect each other. A character might affect the story, the story might affect the tone, the tone might affect the gameplay. And after we figured out some of those elements, we can do a mock-up in Unreal that shows what the world would really feel like. Now, of course, this was a really early rough draft of just what the priest would look like walking into this environment to get a feel for the tone, the lighting, the color. And with this as a jumping off point, we can start thinking about camera angles. We can start framing up shots if we have an idea for a scene. We can work with directors to see what that's going to look like. Or with game developers, we can start to figure out what this level layout could be if we were gonna have some action in this area. So that's the process from a blank page to something you can run around in, something that you can move a camera in, something that fully realizes the world, but that considers the story, the tone, and the gameplay. All right, thanks for listening. Look forward to working with you.